Evening, everybody. Um, just a little bit of a few words on meditation, okay? And I'm going to begin, begin with a poem that I first came across in secondary school about 10 years ago when I was doing the Leaving Cert. And it goes like this, written by a guy called George Herbert. I don't know much about George, but we could say he was English. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference, eh? but he, he wrote this. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack, from my first entrance in, drew near to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. I guessed I answered, worthy to be here, love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, am I dear, I cannot look at thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them, let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame. My dear, then I will serve. You must come you must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. That's the poem called Love by George Herbert. And the reason I, I quote it is that the more we struggle with meditation and persevere, perseverance is the important thing with meditation. Perfection will give it the kiss of death. Faithfulness, trying and struggling, never judging. And I would actually think that the more we try with it and the more we struggle and faithful with it, there is a meeting happening in meditation. I am being met. When I enter that world of silence, I am being met by a presence that I have no name for. It's like the old Jews in the Old Testament. They didn't have any name for God. God was beyond name. And I am being met. And sometimes when I'm being met by something powerfully good or powerfully loving, that I kind of shy away. And I kind of say, I kind of go back into, or very quickly resort back into thinking about something, or I need to move, I need to do this, that, and anything else. So I'm actually backing away, like the guy in the poem. I become frightened by being what I'm being met in meditation. And I would think that in meditation, it takes a lot of courage and perseverance to sit with being met. If I'm being met with a silence that I think that is rich and as powerful, and that's something that's very healing or whatever, without trying to de describe it or name it, I just stay with it. And rather than kind of saying, this is not for me, or kind of being frightened by it, or I'm not worthy, or I'm backing out, or resorting back into... Because many of us have a tape in our head that kind of says, like the man in the poem, I'm not worthy, look what I've done. If they, if they only knew me... I don't know what they would say. <laughs> Being met in meditation has nothing to do with that. It's almost like Jesus never looked for anybody's story. The people who came for forgiveness, he didn't want to know their story. He, wanted, he just wanted to meet them. And he met them. The great thing about the prodigal son, he came home with his story, did he get a chance to tell it? No. He was met, there was rejoicing, there was thanking and gratitude, forgiveness, love, compassion. So I think at the heart of meditation, we are being met as a presence. It is very silent, very healing, very powerful. And I think that it takes a lot of courage maybe to sit in that moment or whatever moments we have without thinking, without naming it, and just say, I can stay here. I'm being invited into this space, and I stay here. So let's do a bit for a moment. And in the Catholic tradition, we have the sacrament of real presence. But 
the big task in life for, and we come to the church and we kind of expose the blessed sacrament, real presence. But the whole goal of life is real presence. That I be present to my wife, she be present to me, I be present to my friends. I can open up and be present. And so in meditation, we are, we are, we're actually practicing the sacrament of real presence. We want to be really present to the silent and allow the silence to be really present to us. And you can take all the religious language out of it if you like, but presence is so important and practicing that power of presence in the now is so important. So let's sit straight, hands on our knees. And just to remind ourselves, physical stillness is a good sign of being inwardly still. We'll get lots of reasons to move, to move, to itch and everything else, making ourselves comfortable in the beginning. And as we said, very simple. Notice the power of your breath entering your body. And the power of your breath leaving your body taking all tension, anxiety, whatever it is, letting it all go. And tuning into your body, your physical presence, being present to your own body. And then begin to say your sacred word to yourself. Learning to say it, especially if you're new, but even if you've done it for a long time, remind ourselves that learning to say it. And that word quells our thinking, calms our minds, and beckons us into the land of silence. So let's be silent for a minute or two. And that's one minute to repeat. Meditation is a, is a meeting. We are being met and we are opening ourselves and being silent for that meeting. Don't ever worry about how perfect it is. All you can do is your best. It is the effort and the faithfulness that counts. And it's the faithfulness day in, day out matters. There is no perfect session or sitting. Never will be. But over time it's like you're chiseling away and you're shaped, you're, being allow you're allowing yourself to be shaped. So best of look at it. Uh, my words don't matter. It's what you do by sitting. Reading books is not uh, answer. It is actually the practice and practicing and practicing 
Try the morning, try the evening, building up maybe to 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and again in the evening. Thank you. Take care.